today we would like to continue with the foot leg meditation. We started it last Sunday. It was verse 17. And this foot leg meditation of foot service, this Charan Seva is such a huge nectar ocean. To really dive deep. Like Goranga Sundara was telling yesterday, the difference between diving and swimming. We are diving with our hearts and we are swimming with our minds, with our intelligence. We want to dive into the meaning of the different surfaces. And we want to beg mercy from the maidservants like Tulsi Manjari, Rupa Manjari, Ananga Manjari, that they open the treasure house of their services, of their realized services. And um, Kishori was so sweet to uh, volunteer for this reading because this verse 43 of Vilap Koshmanjali is another situation, another Leela where Krishna is worshipping Shimati Radhika's lotus feet and it's again in another mood than before. So we're very curious, Kishori, if you are ready. Thank you for giving me this seva. So we are reading from Shishivilap Kusumanjali, verse 43. Just to soothe your proud peak. The Prince of Braja places your feet on his head. Thus, making it even more beautiful with the mark of your foot leg. When will I Make your feet most splendid with this nectarian foot leg. Just to soothe your proud peak, the Prince of Braja places your feet on his head, thus making it even more beautiful with the mark of your foot leg. When will I make your feet most splendid with this nectarian foot leg. Notes. Sri Raghunathas Swarupa Vesh is very vivid. And in this absorption, he prays to Swamini for her devotional service. So here we see also, mm. sorry, I just want to say that we hear in this um, commentary, Baba is guiding us through the different stages that uh, the devotees can reach or have reached. Here we see or hear that it, uh, Tulasi Manjari is there, you know. Raghunath Das Goswami is in his Swarupa Vesh. He is feeling and seeing all the services she is doing in a very alive way. And then he is praying deeper and deeper to go there longer and more diving deep. <laughs> Thank you. 
Sorry, only this I wanted to mm. mention. Sri Raghunatha Swarupa Ves is very vivid. And in this absorption, he prays to Swamini for her devotional service. How wonderful is his savor of these visions. <laughs> How agitated he is when he loses this consciousness again. Those who have attained perfection have nothing else but experience. And those who are advanced in bhajan also experience some kind of succession of experiences. Otherwise, how could they continue? <laughs> This succession of transcendental experiences, including even their dreams, are the light, life support of the Premika devotees. <laughs> I will repeat this line. Those who have attained perfection have nothing else but experience. And those who are advanced in bhajan also experience some kind of succession of experiences. <coughs> Otherwise, how could they continue? This succession of transcendental experiences, including even their dreams, are the life support of the Premika devotees. I'm waiting for you to finish this paragraph because then it is complete. The different three stages that Baba is uh, claiming here. Sri Raghunath Swarupa Ves is genuine and not at all false. The Sadakas should first endeavor for the experiences and afterwards everything becomes natural as is the case with the devotees who have attained rati How sweet it is to be with Swamini in a transcendental absorption. 
The experienced devotee is always immersed in this rasa. Yes, thank you, Kishore. This is such a beautiful explanation of the different kinds of devotees. And we can easily access where are we? Where am I? I'm a sadaka. I'm trying to, to remember. I'm trying to go and feel something into the elas that I have heard from Gurde, from all the Vaishnavas. And I endeavor. I, I put some energy in that. I put my mind in that. I put my my heart in that I want to really pray for this. And I am still also, you know, I'm I'm I have my diversions. My mind and my heart are not a hundred and eight percent in there, but I endeavor. So I endeavor by reading, by remembering, by hearing, by Shravanam and Kirtanam. And then afterwards, Baba says, everything becomes natural. First, it seems to be artificial. There is something that I feel I have to do. On the other hand, Gurudev has already confirmed to me that I am Radhika Stasi. So why do I have to endeavor for it? Because I'm still very much in my human ego. I'm still so much uh, feeling with my material senses. The tongue likes to eat a lot. The belly likes to be full. <laughs> These things, they are also very important for me at this moment. I am not on the level of the premika devotees who are very much, but with everything they do, they are so absorbed in their spiritual identity. That is the level when it becomes natural. And that I would like to reach, and I am on the way. I am like, you know, on, in, the, in the movement of becoming a natural Premika Vishnavi. I have the confirmation of Gurudev. I have uh, the mercy. But still, my feelings might not be so much condensed yet that in every moment of the day, in every day, I am completely always in smaran. <coughs> and when I'm not in smaran, then I forget. I have the tendency to forget who I am. Mm -hmm. And when I forget who I am, what happens? Oh, then I want to enjoy my, you know, all what I want to enjoy in this life. <laughs> my natural enjoyment tendencies become more strong. But those who have attained perfection, like Raguna Das Goswami, who have the cities, for them it's natural. It becomes natural because their attachment and their love is in the lotus feet of Swami. <coughs> so Baba is explaining these three levels. The sadaka who is endeavoring, we have to put in energy. We have to put in time. The mind needs to be purified. And again, I am like a, a big elephant. <laughs> After the bath, again, I put the sand on my body. <laughs> I do this because this is my uh, situation, right? That is natural for me at the moment. But for them, it is natural that they have this perfection and they experience nothing else. And if there comes the moment when they are again lesser connected out of the lila then praying and crying for this but even we hear this often when they are in the so-called bodily consciousness the twanging that's how baba is expressing of the siddhadeya of the mantri uh, identity is always there they always feel it it's not so much difference between in and out it's like a continuation of feelings and experiences Whereas in my case, I, I, I have to focus. I have to say, no, I'm not watching TV. I'm reading now Vilap Kushmanjali. 
whatever it may be. But I have to focus. I take the time. I have to make a decision. This is my homework. And then there's the class in between that Baba is also explaining. Those who have uh, advancement in bhajan, they also experience some kind of succession. Means they have something like focus during the day. They always remember, for example, what is Swamini doing now? Oh, it's seven o'clock in the morning. She is on her way to Nanda Gaon to cook for in Mother Yashoda's kitchen. They have a succession of experiences, means they have some already some feeling of connection to the daily activities of a bridge party, especially who, especially our Swamini, Shrimati Radhika. And this succession is already the mercy, because by this mercy that they can remember what is Swamini doing now, or what does Gurudev want me to do, you know, this has different, different uh, feelings. Not only in the in the connection to Swamini, but also in the connection to my Vaishnavas and to Vrindavan. How can I serve? What is my where is my eagerness focused on? And this succession or these feelings, they continue to grow. And this growing is the mercy that I want to do more. That I want to, you know, give more time, give more energy, give more focus. And then after some time, and this becomes natural, it is at the at, at a certain uh, level called <coughs> rati, deep attachment. Then it is so sweet. But in the beginning, there is some homework, there is some endeavor and some learning how to develop taste. If you want to add something on this, um, Jainanda Maharaji, you are the best teacher of this developing, how to develop a taste. No, 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 I'm learning from, oh. No, 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 I'm learning from you and Gauranga Sundara and, uh, you know, many other devotees, Gaurabhani, Gaurachandra or another. So our Gora Sundaraji is a little, you know, not feeling well. So this is, uh, my feeling is, uh, say this Suniti and Baba mentioned natural. <coughs> like uh, for us conditioned soul, it's sadaka, uh, sadhana is made not natural from beginning. My understanding like this. Sadhana or that, that external sadhana and internal sadhana there. External sadhana is like, uh, like by the bhakti. We follow some, something. And internal sadhana is mind absorption, which this how to observe is in this book, like Birapak Manjari. Mm. So, if our mind naturally attach our Radhika's lotus feet, the Siddha, like Gurudev, naturally attach lotus feet of Radhika. Some devotee is very strong attachment, naturally goes to Radhika's lotus feet. Or some like neophyte devotee like myself, some endeavor may be necessary. <clears throat> and then natural stage is like we are in the, in the Bhagavad Gita, 18th chapter, uh, 78th, last purport. Prabhupada mentioned normal condition, our spirit soul in the, we are in the Fradini Shakti, pleasure giving potency. 
So if we surrender or attach or some taste for radicals lotus feet and radicals feeling, then slowly, slowly natural position will be attained. And how to attain natural stage of, of this conditions of Siddha is I think follow the feeling of Rashika Vaishnava. Here like Ragnata Das Goswami, Torasi Manjari. Or this purport given by Anandas Vaj Maharaj. And also we are, we are very fortunate to associate our Gurudev, who give us such feeling. And Raga Bhajan, I feel, we follow this feeling of Rashika Vaishnava, especially Siddha Mahatma. And slowly, slowly, absorption increasing. Sometimes we may start, you know, during class, say, like one hour, or one and a half hour. And then slowly, slowly, daily life, like this very expert is our Gora Sundara. Because he is always meditating, meditating, he's doing business, making prasada for distribution. But his beauty is, he's thinking, I'm not cooking in this material world. I'm cooking for Radhika's kitchen. I'm cooking for Radhika or Radhika's seva. So completely identify in this spiritual consciousness. So therefore, at first we, we have to identify who am I. Yeah, I'm Radha Dasi. I'm maid servant of Radhika. So whatever I do in daily life, I'm doing for the radicals seva. Some, some devotee take care of children, kids. Today, we have a, a birthday party of kids. And kids is so happy. So she invited me to please come my birthday. So, but, uh, so I have to come also this class. I just before class, I visit her personally and give, you know, small kind of, and uh, some present and, uh, so this kind of, so we are thinking this kids is not my kids. This radicals manjari. Then consciousness may slowly, slowly different. I'm surprised how Gurudev is teaching us in daily life. If you want to marry, you can marry. But whatever you do in family life, be happy, be peaceful, and do the seva radika. Do, do meditate. So Guru Dev is teaching the beautiful is at first we he say you are Radha Dasi, you are soul, you are good, very good. He's always glorified devotees. Then devotees start thinking, yeah, maybe yeah. I'm soul. I'm Swarupa. So my duty is to serve our Swamini. And Gurudev's beauty is, he is learning, he say, I'm learning from you. You are teacher, I'm student. <laughs> so I also try to learning from 
from Gurudev. Some technical problem. Mm. I remember once where they've explained this um, similar to what Chayananda Maharaj was saying now that um, natural means we are one pointed in all our three bodies that is the sadhak they had a gross body, then the subtle body in our dreams, because here is written also, including even their dreams, and in our spiritual body, if we fix our goal that we are Radha Dasi and we want to serve Radha Rani, and then do all the material everyday things in this consciousness, then we also come into this succession of experiences of feeling like a Radha Dasi. But if we only come to the class on Sunday and meditate and have some nice emotions and then go back to living some material life that has no intention of serving Radha Rani, then it is not natural and we get in conflict. So it's very nice to listen what Chayananda was saying. And also here, I just remember uh, Gurudev was saying also that to this sentence, that's why I wanted to repeat it because I was listening to Gurudev <laughs> within me, um, that those who have attained perfection have nothing else but experience. Here Guru Dev said that experience means realization. That before we know something from the books or we heard something from someone and we try to understand with the mind, oh, this is the truth. But then still doubts can come. Because I don't know, somebody said it's true, but I don't know if it's true or not. I can believe it, but I don't know. But when I experience this, even one time in some situation in my life, then I know, I realize that, oh, love is the way. <laughs> then I can know that this is the truth. But like you said, Suniti, we are, we just, and like Baba is saying here, bhajan is very important. So we have to endeavor first to get even the first experience to start to live in this. Yes, this is so sweet. And also, we don't have to. I mean, for the level I am at, it's also in a way a natural development from every step where I am. So we don't have to constantly beat ourselves mm. that uh, it is not so easy maybe as it seems or maybe as it is written sometimes. But we are in a development and we have a good friends in high places. <laughs> <laughs> we have the good connections to our parampara. Last time Gurdi was also speaking. Yes, we have the uncle and we have the aunties and we have uh, all of our family who are there already in the service. And we are very happy to be their little followers. And slowly, slowly, always it will increase. Never be hopeless. Mm. Always be 
in the positive feeling, even if something is seems to get stuck in the mind or in the consciousness, even in the hopelessness, try to be hopeful. <laughs> that is my how I try to do it. Mm. When the times come when I don't feel any much of a flow, or you know, I feel uh, uh, like a lack or some negativity, still I am very hopeful because I am in the right place with the right people in the right family. So I always feel good. I always feel good, even in the difficult times. And that I also want to say, because it's not that the spiritual life is always only sugar and, uh, you know, cookies and cake. It is. It is. But sometimes there are some dry phases or when we become sick or when some family things happen, emotions can also get imbalanced. But nevertheless, we just walk on with our goal in the heart and we keep on praying and singing and connecting and it will come that these balances are there. That's why we are celebrating so many birthdays and so many uh, weddings and so because it makes us balance. Happiness always makes us balance. Thanks. It is more easy to be uh, a Radha Dasi, when everything is going well. Um, <laughs> but it's, uh, I want to add. Back? No, but I just want to add to what you're saying. It's very nice because Guru Devos always says that love needs obstacles. That obstacles are like a dam in the river. And then the love is like collecting behind the dam. And then when you break it, it will flow everywhere in all directions. So it's also fitting to what you're saying <laughs> should i continue i think so because i hope they will come back soon but of course all devotees here are yeah. eager to listen more okay a great agony awakens in Sri Raghunath's heart when the vision of the previous verse disappears from him. And his heart is floating once again on the waves of anxious prayer that carry him back into the kingdom of Leela. This time, he will anoint Sri Radhika's foot soles with lacti saying eh shamaju do you know the greatness of the foot luck how sweet are these words even if they are just uttered within the mind I like this here because it shows how Raghunath Das is doing because even he on his very high level of perfection and premika Dasi to be, he sometimes loses the thread. At least this is how Baba is putting it here. He loses and then again prayer and the heart is in the wave of the prayer. And this waves carry him back into the kingdom of Leela. So we see that his continuation is also happening because he never gives up. And then in the next moment, he is in this situation where he is in the foot service, in the Charan Seva. 
And within his mind, he's speaking to Swamini. I also remember that Gurudev always encourages us to speak with Swamini in the mind, to pray, to speak, to connect in the mind. And then what happens will be the next step, the next stage that is explained. And it's I underlined the next two, three sentences because they are also important, I feel. When the smarana becomes very intense, it is as if one speaks them directly to Swamini. One does not think anymore, I am doing smarana. This is a Vishpurti of Sri Raghunath Das Goswami. Sri Das Goswami sees that as Tulsi Manjari, she takes a cup of footlek and a brush while sweetly saying Rajendra Nandana's head will become more beautiful when it is anointed with your footlek as he tries to soothe your peak by placing your feet on his head. But that does not make Krishna inferior. It will increase his superiority. So well, this is very special, right? Now the Smaran becomes so intense of Raghunath Das Goswami that he is speaking to Swamini uh, in, in his uh, identity as Tullas Imanjari. And that is uh, also in the last uh, Prima Bhakti Chandrika uh, conference, we had the question how to talk to Swamini, how to speak to Radhika. So even if I am not always constantly on this level of being in Swarupa Vesh, in my spiritual identity. But still I can speak to Swamini, I can pray, I can uh, remember what I have heard, I can float on the waves of the remembrance of Raghunath Das Goswami's uh, experiences. That is also, like our dear Gora Sunda says, the second-hand experience. <laughs> but it is connected to a first-hand experience and makes it so wonderful. And then uh, we can forget that we are in Smaran, but it is possible to be right there in that moment. That is like a miracle. It happens. It's like a shift of ego from Sadakadeha to spiritual identity. We are praying for this, but even if it has not happened yet, any kind of prayers, any kind of personal approach to Swamini is possible. But if it's happening in, uh, in this level of bhakti that uh, Raghunath Das has, then it is called a vispurti. Means V is like a elevation. It makes it you know, special. It's out of the gunas. It is in the spiritual existence. It is in transcendence that he has the V, sporty, means he's living there. And that's when he sees himself or herself taking the cup and uh, a brush and then speaking again. And uh, 
we come back to the now in his visporti we come back to the to the verse to his original prayer what is the situation krishna is so much in love with shrimati radhika that even when she becomes out of her love a little bit into her peak how do you call this a mood of man what man or yeah. <laughs> it's the man it's the, the that loving anger when she says don't come too close to me really i don't want to see you now but krishna is so overwhelmed by love that he takes shrimati radhika's lotus feet and puts them on his head he this is this is one of his uh, efforts to try to make her uh how do you say balanced again <laughs> he wants to make her feel good and Super. he wants to show huh yes Super. Soothe her, yes, to make her soft-hearted again. <laughs> he, he is so overwhelmed. And just this morning, when Gora Sunda and me we were discussing this verse, we were trying to find out the the meaning of be being controlled by love. Because Krishna, he is controlled by love. But what kind of love? This is the selfless love that Shrimati Radhika has. that makes everything possible for her beloved and when krishna puts his uh, the lotus feet of shrimati radhika on his head it makes him more beautiful sometimes in this material world submission is something that is connected to some kind of unwillingness to really surrender like when you're a slave and there's a cruel king that makes you work hard because otherwise you will be killed or whatever that is not really to be controlled by love usually in this material world we like to be more fearful and we have we are usually also controlled by fear but krishna is never controlled by fear or by some feeling of uh, which is not prema Pressure. Oh, pressure! Yeah, Gora says pressure. So this is not the pressure that Krishna is is uh, applying to himself that he has to put a lotus feet on his head. It is the the love of Swamini in which way she is expressing it. It doesn't really matter. Now she is expressing it in the loving anger, but it's so much attractive for him that he is happily. and uh very deeply going into this role of the submissive hero mm. that is very interesting that he is you know during all this situation overwhelmed and controlled by swamini's love and that is a difference to material world where we have also submission and we also have devotion but often times it is not really pure it is you know the other side of the coin of hate and love but there in the spiritual world there is no other side of the coin it is all pure bhakti pure love and that's why mohan that's why baba is writing that this increases his qualities krishna becomes more beautiful when he puts shrimati radhika's lotus feet with the red color on his head that is amazing isn't it somebody would like to add on this i cannot see who is here who would like to add on this beautiful subject Laura, you want to say something?
Yeah, Shirate. I just listen to with wonderful class and took a little nap in between. The transcendental naps with the transcendental sound vibration. This, this is the best relaxation to me with these topics. And maybe one day I can also dream about this, as I'm waiting for. <laughs> but still, it not happened. But I, I yes, we we in the morning we uh, we spoke about this and uh, this this unique feeling of Krishna when he is controlled. Under control of, of Swamini, and this is only happen in Vrindavan. No? We can see his his uh, majestic a uh, form, and in this form, he is never controlled. He is the controller. He is controlling everything in his form as Vishnu, and so on and so on. We will never see this sweet behave of him that he uh he really become the the servant of radhika and this sweetness when we meditate on this point that he is controlled the sweetness we also a little bit we can also see in dhammoda when mother yashoda is uh binding sweet krishna on this, wie heißt Mörser? Mar Marder. Marder. Nee, ich weiß nicht. Piece of wood. <laughs> yes. Uh, in this big tool in the kitchen. And um, first, uh, he ran away. And after all, she catches him. And uh, a little bit to, to, to judge him, she liked to bind him on this wooden, wooden, piece. wooden piece. Yeah. And but she cannot. Now we remember this story. There is all, always two small pieces is uh, missing in, in the spring what uh, she used. And then uh, other gopis see the situation and they bring also some strings there. But even that is not helpful. But then after a, a time when mother is giving everything and she's sweating and also she is uh, it is a, a little situation that she blamed in the um, association of, of all the neighbors and everybody everybody see this situation and but out of love to her Krishna she liked to do this as a service as a loving service so that he will uh, he should uh, become a, a good child. It is for his protection because he is so naughty. And uh, then Krishna gives up this uh, behave of to be the controller and let them let Mother Yashoda bind him on this tool. And then there we can see also this this uh, undescribable sweetness of Krishna when he is controlled by love. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes when he is uh, when he likes some sweets from the gopas uh, from the gopis, and then they say, okay. Then um, for this you have to dance. 
<laughs> the sweet boy, this bluish boy there. He's uh, ornamented with a peacock feather and a flute. Unbelievable to describe how sweet this boy is. And uh, for this sweet, he really starts to dance in the front of uh, the Gopis. So, and, and these are examples where we can see when Krishna is controlled by the love. And uh, there is nothing more sweet in the three worlds than this when he show up the, his uh, unschuld. Innocence. His innocence to us. And especially now in this verse when we when he when he is so happy that he bring his his head under the footsteps of Radhika. This is the most beautiful point in this when when the most powerful uh, person in all uh, universes is giving up his position and and becomes uh, controlled by love of his associates, especially of uh, Radhika. And this sweetness we all desire to see one day as Manjari is watching this. Maybe when I, one, one has an idea when Krishna is controlled by the Manjaris, there is maybe another example. Yes, something is coming also here. Uh -huh. It's uh, in the following sentences. The Goswamis say that Sri Krishna's greatest qualities are that his mind melts with love and that he is controlled by love. This attribute gives life to all other attributes. Sri Radhika is the embodiment of that love. So naturally, she controls Krishna the most. And Krishna's quality of prema vasyata, subjugation by love, is manifested to the utmost when he is with her. Everyone wants to reveal his own superiority. When the poet Chayadev was describing in his famous Gita Govindam how Krishna held Radha's feet on his head just to soothe her peak, he could not find the right words to end the Sanskrit verse. While the poet went for his bath, Krishna himself came and wrote the missing syllables down for him in the book. Dehi Pada Palavam Udaram. Give me your generous lotus feet. We meditate on Krishna 
as he submits himself to Sri Radhika, the colorful peacock feather crown cannot make his head as beautiful as this red footlock of Sri Radhika's. The Kinkaris know the purpose of this very well. Sheila Lila Suka says, You are uniquely known as Shiki Pincha Mauli, he who wears a crown of peacock feathers. Why does Krishna wear the peacock feather? When he enters Vrindavan forest to tend the cows, the peacocks, seeing his fresh monsoon cloud-like luster, dance in ecstasy. Seeing their dancing, Sri Govinda Nataraj, the king of dancers, dances along with them, imitating them by wiggling around on his knees and lifting his hands. When they see this, the peacocks dance in even greater ecstasy, dropping a feather or two. Sri Krishna thinks that the peacocks thus say to him, Oh, God of love, if fate had given us human bodies, we could have served you with fruits and flowers from the forest. But alas, we are not so fortunate. We are just birds. And everybody loves our feathers. If you would lovingly accept this insignificant offering, then we would be blessed. So Krishna, who gives himself away in exchange for an offering of even a spoon of water, and a tulsi leaf accepted the simple gift of love on his head. Shiradika makes the best offering by printing her red footlet on his head with great pride. It is the love with which she does it that increases the beauty of his head, not just the color of the footlock. Transcendence becomes decorated with the color of pure love in this way. Jai Shri What a beautiful revelation of Krishna's heart, which is melted by love. Even when the peacocks are dancing, it's so much obliged to also accept their offerings. Of 
I can hear something. You hear it also, Kishori? Rade, Rade? We have some Italian radio vision on. <laughs> Maybe somebody would like to mute their radio, uh, their microphones. Isn't it that the moderator can also mute? Exactly. Yeah, they are all out. No, no. Who, is Who is the host? The host is... No, okay, good. Thank you. So we hear that Krishna, he has so much sweetness that he accepts in the sweet mood of his loving his devotees, the feathers of the peacocks who are dancing and he's dancing with them also. And the peacocks say, oh my God, my dear Lord, we cannot be humans, but we are so fortunate when you accept our dancing and our peacock feathers. And you carry our love with you through the forest of Rindavan. And before that also, it was very nicely explained about the poet Jayadev Goswami. His verses are very famous in the Vaishnava world. It's called the Gita Govindam, the song of love. And he, he was inspired in his heart to write about this Leela where Krishna accepts the lotus feet of Srimati Radhika. He is begging even, and he was not sure. You know that story? He was not sure that Srimati Radhika really is, is asked by Krishna to put her feet on his head, and he thought, oh, is this really uh, pure meditation now? Or should I just wait for another sign if this is really true. So when he went out to take a bath in the noontime to make himself fresh again, because you know in India it can get hot and maybe he thought, oh my god, I'm getting too hot now. These verses come out in a really special way. Is it really the truth? <laughs> then Krishna when he was taking a bath, this Jayadev Goswami took the form of Jayadev Goswami and went back into his house where his wife was cooking. And his wife was a little bit uh, astonished that he finished his bath so quickly. But she didn't bother because, you know, these, these are the poets of transcendence. They can quickly get an inspiration show. So she didn't say anything. So Krishna, uh, as a Jayadev Goswami, he sat down and he... Uh, you know, he he put his his signs in the songbook in his poetry book, so that uh, when Jayan, Jayadev Goswami came back later, he could realize, my God, who was this? Somebody uh, wrote in my notebook, and he asked his wife, Darcy, my Davy, my Goddess, where? Who was here? And she said, it was you. You were just coming back quickly, and I was amazed, and you went out again, and now you just came back. I said, no, that was not me. And then they realized that Krishna himself has applied a trick to make him understand, yes, this is the, the missing syllables. Dehi pada palavam udaram. Give me your generous lotus feet. And that is also... What Baba says, we meditate on Krishna as he submits himself to Radhika because the Dasis, they love these feelings. They love these feelings when both, you know, Krishna and Radhika are completely immersed in their sweet, sweet love. And Swamini is also melted because Krishna is melted. And so they are melting each other continuously. And that's why Shimati Radhika is giving the best offerings, because even her offerings of her lotus feet to him, these are so 
you know, pleasing to Mohan. And that is uh, why Baba says that increases the beauty of his head. It's another decoration. The peacock's feathers also uh, increase the beauty of Krishna's head because this is also the love of the peacocks. But the, this red color on his black curls, on his blackish shining curls, this is the topmost decoration. <laughs> mm. Yes, now comes another Leela Kishori with the foot leg and the foot feet of Radhika. Sheila Kavi Karnapura has ex expertly glorified Radhika's foot leg as follows. One day when she Radhika was in an independent mood. She Hari was anointing her lotus feet with foot leg. And he became so attracted to the sweetness of these feet that he held them to his chest so that the lack that was not dry yet got stuck to his chest. May that red lack on Radha's lotus-like feet that sticks on Hari's chest more beautifully than even the Shivatsa sign, the Gashtuba gem, and the goddess of fortune that is prayed with eloquent verses by the glow of the rising morning sun that destroys the nocturnal darkness and that perks like a blooming red lotus flower in the bluish water of the Yamuna River protect you. In the same way, Manini's foot leg increases the beauty of Hari's head. One day, Shimati is angry with Mohan. So Mohan falls at her feet and says, If you won't look at me or speak with me even once, then how can I live? pacifying her proud anger by placing her feet that are moist with perspiration on his head, thus coloring it with her foot leg and making his peacock feather fall off. Krishna is the emperor of the kingdom of Rasa. And by holding these feet on his head, he becomes Rasik Shekhar, the crown jewel of relishers. I praise Sorry, this is um, a quote from Radha Rasa Sudhanidi. Mm -hmm. 
I praise Harry, who is gladdened by a wonderful festival of play, who is the very form of intense, enchanting rasa, and whose beautiful peacock feather rolls at Sri Radha's feet. Because he forgets everything and becomes absorbed in the Madhurya Rasa, Krishna is called Rasa Gana Mohan Murti, the embodiment of thickly condensed flavors. Such Rasa cannot exist if there is still a fiber of awe and reverence for Krishna as the majestic, majestic Lord. Yeah, this is also maybe a good point to, to speak a little bit. Because that Krishna can forget himself as a majestic Lord of the universe. It needs this amount of intimacy and fearlessness from his devotees. And Sri Vrindavan is the only place where this is happening to the highest degree. And we can see in Advaita Charya how that there is a heavy desire to take part on this and but for Vishnu it's not possible to be in Vrindavan because he cannot give up this mood of uh, Almighty. Similar if we can see Shiva how he desired this how much and he become uh, Kobeshwara and even Narada. They all like to take part of this beauty, but they cannot. Lakshmi Devi, they cannot. Because for this, you have to give up everything. And so, we can see how strong the desire is when we see that Advaita Charya is actually Maha Vishnu and also Mahadev in one person. So, if the demigods have some problems in the universe, they call this Maha Vishnu to help and regulate all things in the universe. They are very, this Mahavishnu is very powerful, right? Actually, he don't need help. But we can see he is calling Mahaprabhu. And if we see this, we can think, okay, he needs some help. But is it true that he needs help, Mahavishnu? I don't think so. There must be another reason behind his calling. And maybe it is like this, that he liked to see and listen and take part of the pastimes of Radha and Krishna in this Leela. In this Gora Leela. In yes. this Gora Leela. And they cannot enter Vrindavan. So, and it's a nice meditation on this also to every one of us. How is it possible that, that even the highest demigods and even Vishnu, they cannot enter Vrindavan 
And how is it possible that we enter Vrindavan as a more or less simple human being? This is more than astonishing. No? But we have, to, there is a need of some qualification, and Gurudev said there is no qualification. <laughs> but some greed has to be there, a strong desire. We need a teacher to surrender to him as the navigator who is already in Vrindavan. And this is the beauty of the line after Mahaprabhu, that he opened a, a door, a port to Vrindavan. By his mercy, we as simple human beings are able, if we are trust in his line and in his teachers who are sending by him or her, what how we can see, that we can enter Vrindavan to see this, what we today again reading, the beauty of Vrindavan, this, when Krishna is a cowherd and plays with the gopas, with the gopis, and with Radharani. It's so beautiful. And it's so deep. And it's a big meaning to every one of us. <clears throat> what a what a mercy is on, on on this that we can do so and think so and read this and listen. It's more than astonishing. Tulsi holds Swamini's feet to her chest and paints the red footlock on them while making her relish the rasa of so many lilas. She dries the lack off by blowing on it. Who else but an expert kinkery can render such a service? How beautiful is that red lack? It looks like the king of sunrise taking shelter of her reddish Lotus food souls to serve them. So beautiful, no? Yes. And Suniti said that this red color on Mohan's black locks look so beautiful, but also these peacock feather colors are so nicely matching. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And uh, we can find pictures like that. That give the light, nice uh, meditation. How beautiful Swamini's lotus feet are, and how how perfectly the kinkaris are uh, decorating them with different designs, and uh, how they are. You know, when they are doing it, like Tulsi Manjari, she's speaking all the lilas that have happened around this. How Krishna took the feet, on his chest, on his head, how he tries to also decorate the feet. And this is all very uh, inspiring to Swamini to serve him more and more with her beauty. And that is uh, inspiring for us because we can remember the, the different, different leelas and we find 
a good uh, meditation for myself, which Lila, I like to remember, you know, what is happening between uh, Radha and Mohan and the Kinkaris, who are always assisting that they come together and that they are reminding Swamini when she is in separation. And they are also assisting Mohan when he is becoming too excited. So I, I like these verses, how they are connected and that we can get like a inspiration of different, different lotus feet leelas. <laughs> now also Tulasi will start speaking to the foot leg. That is also so sweet. Let's listen. The sun is, after all, the friend of the lotus flowers. Anuragini Tulsi, admiring the beauty and loveliness of these foot souls, tells to the red lack. Oh, red foot lack. Don't be distressed, thinking that you are not qualified to color these coral red foot soles. It is not through a small amount of good fortune that you can attain, attain the shelter of these feet. As a result, of taking shelter of these feet, your fortune will simply increase. You will be able even to beautify the curly locks of Shama Sundar. Blessed you are for attaining the shelter of Mahabhava Mai's lotus feet. How many sweet things Tulsi speaks within her mind. Swamini's mind is elsewhere. Her mind is immersed in the rasa that was served to her by Tulsi. And then Tulsi attracts Swamini's mind by saying, Hey, Shamaju, we will feel blessed by seeing you beautify Shama Sundara's chest. This red lack will increase the beauty of his deep, blackish, curly locks. From the Gaudiya Vaishnava Acharyas, we can learn the greatness of surrender to Sri Radha's lotus feet. They love Radha more than Krishna. Radha Sneadika. This is the great gift of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yes, we have already touched this now. How the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gives the access to the service of the lotus seat of Srimati Radhika. And all the all the acharyas, all the teachers, all those our great Mahajans, they have blessed the people of this Kali Yuga with their own meditations and with their own uh, verses and poets and realizations. Just think once. Maybe I am not qualified 
maybe I feel I'm not qualified, but now this body and this soul have been taken birth in this time. That is not by chance. Just like Tulsi is speaking in her mind, oh, red foot leg, don't be distressed thinking that you are not qualified. It's a, a big amount of great fortune that you have. So we can also feel that I might not be qualified, but it's by great fortune that I have met my dear beloved Gurudev, my dear Radha Mohan, my dear Vrindavan, all my brothers and sisters, and they are helping and showing and we are walking on this path of Radha Dasyam together. So it's a great, great fortune and it's a great possibility. And I should never be discouraged and never feel uh, alone. Like Tulsi is giving this encouragement to the foot leg. Also, she is giving encouragement to us. The souls who are trying to follow Raghunadas Goswami, Rupa Goswami, our Gurudev. And we try to develop this greed and this understanding, this type of, this feeling of one pointedness. And our fortune will increase. It is only a matter of time that the mind will be more balanced and be more focused. And we always have the mercy of Gurudev, even with, you know, now today we were not so fortunate because the internet in Vrindavan broke. But I'm sure they are talking and blessing us who are sitting here in separation. This is the... This is the also the position of the foot leg. The foot leg thinks I have no qualification. And we think also I have no qualification. But to look at it from a different point of view, we are also blessed. We are also very much fortunate. So we can always see both sides. And we always be grateful and be humbly happy. <laughs> humbly fallen happy. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and now comes a nice quote from uh, Jiva Goswami, who also encourages us that in this age of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to take shelter of Radhika. Srila Jiva Goswami laments for those who do not take shelter of Sri Radhika's feet in the age of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Although they may have taken shelter of Sri Krishna's feet. A person who may be a king, but who does not serve Lord Hari. A person who may be very generous, but who does not offer anything to Lord Hari. A poet who does not glorify Lord Hari. A person who surrenders to a guru without surrendering to Lord Hari. A person who may be very qualified, but who is not dedicated to Lord Hari. A person who may be very sincere, but who does not take shelter of Sri Krishna and who does not follow in the footsteps of Sri Radha, Raja's goddess of fortune. These seven persons pierce my heart like javelins. What is a javelin? Is this a, like an arrow or what is this? I didn't check it up. <laughs> I would check it up quickly. It's a tear. <clears throat> an animal, no? Javelin. No, it's like a spike. Yes, yeah. 
Ah, ein Wurfspeer, okay. Mhm. Dankeschön. These seven persons pierce my heart like javelin. Tulsi is absorbed in Swamini's service, applying her foot leg. This service is so attractive that Srihari sometimes even takes the risk to enter into Mother Chatila's house to freely engage in it, dressed like a barber girl. Dressed like a barber girl, Krishna entered the palace where Rai Radha was sitting, holding a mirror in his hand and nail lack on his chest, he told her, sit down for a manicure. That humorous, amorous girl sat down, opened her golden box and filled a clean jug with scented water. Then she began to make rice nails as beautiful as the moon with her nail lac. This barber girl is named Shama and blissfully wanders around like a puppet of butter. She rubbed and rubbed Rai's feet with foot lack and constantly looked whether it was done nicely or not. Holding Rai's feet to her chest, she wrote her name on her foot soles in a wonderful way. The barber girl said, Oh, fortunate girl, look at your feet and consider if my work is good or bad. Looking carefully, fair-faced Rai said, Oh, hey, which name have you written there? Introduce yourself to me. The barber girl said, Oh, fortunate girl, I am named Shama and I live in your town. Tripya Chandita says, This is not a barber girl. Go home after you have finished your manicure job. Or after you collected your earnings, having enjoyed your beloved. Krishna accidentally writes the male name Shama on Radhika's foot soles instead of the female Shama. Sri Radhika then asks him, but why do you write that name? And Krishna apologizes by saying, Sorry, I cannot spell so well. Radhika then says, Rogue, it is you, Krishna. But she cannot shout out loud because she is sitting in the house of her mother-in-law, 
at Yavad. The service yeah. of prayer. Eh, yes, please. Oh, no, it's, it's okay. You can also continue. I just wanted to f uh, put in that this is another Leela in the Leela about the food service. Eh? Isn't that amazing how many different varieties there are? It is so attractive, this service, that Krishna is uh, dressing him up like a manicure girl and wants to, you know, enter Jatila's house even. He is so greedy. See how greedy Krishna becomes in Vrindavan that he is taking all the risk to enter even the house of the mother-in-law and how he is uh, even, you know, trying to get the service of his heart in all different varieties, whether they are in the kunj or whether they are uh, not meeting, always he wants the service of Sri Mataradika's lotus feet. And all the poets, like this one is Vijay Chandidas, they have been meditating about this and they have also written songs. And uh, it's so nice to meditate when you are chanting and you don't know what to feel or what to think. Then open this book and you can remember, my God, that is that humorous girl opens, that is Krishna opens the golden box and every word can become like a meditation. Uh, in your bhajan, in your mm -hmm. desire to go deep into the different, different uh, possibilities to do the foot service. Yes, Kishori. The service of Prema Mais, Radha, who is full of love for Krishna, feet is the greatest wealth of Rasika Raja, Krishna, the king of relishers. The service of Prema Mai's feet is the greatest wealth of Rasika Raja. In Chaitanya Charitamrita, it is written, the Rasika devotees will understand it. But the ignorant will not. So what does it mean, huh? the ignorant? The ignorant means who don't know who they are. They are not in their constitutional position. Like Jayananda Maharaj was explaining, when we are in our natural position as a servant, at more clear as a dasi, then it comes so natural that we will glorify and try to really serve the lotus feet of Radhika in all the different ways that we have been meditating on and what we have been given here. But if we are in the unnatural position, then we are more ignorant and we forget what is the glories of the Charan Seva. Maybe we have not heard enough yet or we have not enough uh, greed but the Rasika devotees those who have you know aspired to become full of love and full of affection and full of attachment they always remember the glories of Srimati Radhika's lotus feet and even Krishna himself he is uh, revealing it to the world he is even saying that when his uh, Jayadev Goswami his poet of a high, high, high class, Rasika uh, category, when he doesn't know if it's right to write it. Krishna comes personally and he writes, Dehi Pada Palavam Udaram, let me take your lotus feet on my head. And this can only be understood by someone who is really going into the mood of Vrindavan without fear, without any kind of uh, mood of majesty, but the simple love between the cowherders in the cowherd village, in that love, in that simplicity, there is so much, so much, so much more relish than anyone who has not tasted it can ever, ever imagine. Mm. I also have not tasted it, 
but I try to follow and try to uh, repeat the words like a parrot. <laughs> Just to say. While Raguna does applies the food lack, the vision disappears and he laments and prays for that devotional service. Srila Rasika Chandra Das sings, Krishna rolls at your feet to soothe your turbulent, jealous anger and dyes his head with your foot leg. That makes him, makes his head even more beautiful beyond comparison. When will I apply that lack to your foot soles with my own hands and fill my eyes with its beauty that breaks the pride of all other luster with the rising of its blossoming sweetness. Thus ends the verse 43. Wow. We did it, Kishori. We did, we did it. it. The whole verse. That the is something verse. really special, no? This is because the Vrindavan connection got cut off and there were not so many inspired, greedy sharings. <laughs> But thank you, Suniti. It was very nice how you did it take thank on Thank you all for your greedy listening. I think there were many greedy listeners. And yes. uh, thank you for staying with us and not leaving us alone here. <laughs> yes, right. Maybe, Suniti, you can just a little bit more. We have five minutes, six. Explain eh? something because I find it very interesting that Raghunath Das Goswami is a perfected soul. So he's always in this experience. It's like it's written in the beginning. So he has nothing else attained perfection. Those who have attained perfection have nothing else but experience. So even if his visions vanish and he's in the so-called material consciousness, then he's always praying for the service in the Siddha there. But also at the very beginning of the notes of um, Ananta Das Babaji here, it is written, like you already mentioned, also you explained a little bit, that Sri Raghunath Das is in his Swarupa Vish, and in this absorption, he prays to Swamini for her devotional service. So even in in his Varupa Vesh, even if he is there, he's praying for the service. Yes, because he is he is um, how to say, I think he is naturally in his Varupa Vesh. And sometimes he gets the visions, and sometimes he's praying for the visions. So it is vivid, means he is alive in his identify, identification as Tulasi. But even then, when his feelings are always there, you know, natural feelings of being a Dasi, I think that the, the clear vision, this V Sporty, what Baba says, is also for him like a highlight. Mm. Like the highlight would be that he gets the vision of himself seeing how Krishna wants the feet of Swamini on his head. Or the highlight is when he is decorating, she is decorating the feet and is, you know, telling Swamini all different leelas, how she remembers what is coming to her with Mohan. So it means that 
there's a difference between the Swarupavesh and the visions, the Visputis, because then he's in the Leela and he's floating with the Leela. And that goes in waves. That is how I understand, because then he becomes agitated. So, Niti, mm -hmm. I have also one, yes? one uh, idea to add this. If we imagine that he not, not lose the vision, that he is always online, what will happen? He will not tell us anything about these visions because he is he is only there so he this is a perfect example for a merciful soul who is sharing his visions with us if he is continuously in the vision he will not tell us. He cannot tell us. <laughs> he has to come back to write it down or, or tell it to someone who can write it. If he is continuously there, no chance to share. If he is not never there, nothing to write. So in this way, we can see how perfect these individual eternal liberated souls are they they take the burden of this suffering to go in and out to share it with us to give the chance to us to have a small view of this beauty of the uh, eternal lila it is the same what I can see with Arjuna. We see this, this friend of Krishna. He is uh, asking perfect questions to Krishna, right? And actually Krishna is explaining him everything. But why this happened? Is, is it really true that Arjuna is uh uh disturbed and and this and that it takes place this whole uh situation to our blessing that krishna is using his friend as the uh as the one who is listening the explanations of him uh for all other people he is teaching actually the whole human beings and uh, Arjuna is, is the perfect uh, disciple and Krishna is the perfect teacher and in this way also Raghunath does he is actually he is there but he is playing this to our blessings by the mercy because he got all this by the mercy of Mahaprabhu. And Goswami. They use these disciples to our blessing. And they are serving perfectly. This is very also very beautiful. Mm -hmm.